We could be on the internet now. Okay. Oh. Oh. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Edges Facebook's page number one rated show at 5 o'clock on our Facebook page. Three to five things we didn't have time to talk about today. I am your host, Fred Kennedy, and I am assuming we're on the air, are we? Either way, even if we're not, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Corey's Clothiers, at 569 Danforth Avenue. As they say in the business, they'll help you get to second base, possibly third, with your spouse. True story. First up, are we, are we good? Okay, first, hold on, do we have the switcher with the, yeah. the, this is important. First up, first story, cats and breasts, okay? There's a photographer by the name of Yuki Aoyama, uh, who's released a book called Painyan, and the entire book, it's a picture book, is just photographs, as you can see here, of breasts and cats. Now, there's not nudity in this book. It's just breasts in shirts, swimsuits, bras, with cleavage, sometimes no cleavage, and cats beside it. Because, uh, now this is a true, this is science. Doctors have confirmed that a heterosexual male or homosexual female who looks at breasts for um, about five minutes a day will have significantly lower blood pressure and will test lower for stress. Now they say that there are some sexual reasons for this, but they also say that there are some psychological reasons for this uh, from the idea that we find it subconsciously nurturing and reminds us of what it's like to be a child. And it makes us feel relaxed and without stress and fear like we have as adults because when you were a kid, you were the biggest thing that would upset you was whether or not you got mini wheats or Lucky Charms for breakfast. I mention that specifically because we have, there's a little bit of an issue at our house right now. My wife got Lucky Charms for the kids. Why do you get Lucky Charms for the kids? All they do is eat the goddamn marshmallows. That's literally all they do. They eat all the marshmallows, they leave all the cereal, and it's like, why don't you eat it? Because it's all soggy. Because it's all soggy. I don't want to eat soggy Lucky Charms. It's disgusting. Get it together. Get Harvest Crunch. It's better anyways. Um, now, I'm t a magic mic, okay? Let's, okay, zip, 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 back to the cats and breasts, okay? We hit the cats and breasts. I put this up, and uh, one of my wife's friends, like, rolled her eyes about it when I told her I was going to talk about this. It's like, why would you talk about that? It's so misogynistic. No, I'm not talking about it in a misogynistic way. There's nothing wrong with a guy liking breasts. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with a guy liking breasts, saying he likes to look at breasts. There's nothing wrong with a woman saying she likes breasts and likes to look at breasts. I'm not going to be like going up to a girl wearing a low-cut dress and like ramming my face in it and trying to get motorboated or anything. I'm not going to objectify some woman that I see walking around making her feel uncomfortable. I'll like make note of it in my head, maybe think about it later in the day, but I'm not going to do anything creepy, okay? I'm a heterosexual man. I like breasts. I think they're fantastic. We're getting to a very weird point in society. Magic Mike XXL. I had a conversation with one of my buddies about this and she was saying that it's great to see a movie done like this and the female gaze and it's great. She was going on about how like turned on the trailer got her and like Channing Tatum this and like to do things to him and all that. And I was like, dude, if I talked like that about a woman, I'd be like deemed to be this like creepy sex offender weirdo guy. And she's like a big time feminist. And she was saying, no, man, there's nothing wrong with you, like, wanting to have sex with a woman. There's nothing wrong with you getting aroused by the way a woman looks and the way that you look at a woman. It's not like that. What it becomes a problem is, is if you go up to that woman and start, like, whipping out your junk and start going, oh, man, I'm so turned on. It's not like she's going to go up to Channing Tatum and be like, oh, oh man, I'm totally going to, like, rub one out to you later on tonight. She's not going to do that. She's just thinking it. We're talking about it as friends. It's all about context, okay? So any of you guys, and I say this because I'm not alone when I say that, I feel like I need to repress my sexuality in order to be not misogynistic. You don't need to do that. You just need, and this is a great rule of thumb. Just don't be an asshole. That's it. Just don't be a creepy asshole. You've got nothing to worry about. It's a very simple process. There's, I saw a woman walking down the hallway today at work. She's looking very nice and very attractive. I don't need to get into the details because that would be creepy. That would be me being an asshole. 
<sighs> Moving on. Oh, look at that! It's a French person. Now, I've got a French stereotype here to make a good point about France wanting to be pompous and make Americans dumber. Uh, of course, as we all know, uh, last week was the last week. It feels like it's been forever ago. Uh, Donald Trump pulling out of the Paris uh, Climate Accords, uh, saying that, oh, the climate change isn't real. Oh, it's a big ploy by the Chinese to destroy our economy. So France responds in kind by saying, all you U.S. climatologists and scientists that work in climate study and environmental studies and all that stuff want to come to France, we will give you a grant so you can go to France and you can get a scientific grant to do all your scientific research that's getting denied by the U.S. government. Uh, and then you can do all your research there the entire time that you're there. And then you can go back to the States. So basically they're trying to like have a brain drain on the U.S. Now, when I initially thought that, heard about this, I went, Ah, oh, that's awesome. Way to stick it to the Americans. It's so great. Ha, 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 America. You're going to wind up being exactly what everyone always says you are, blah, 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 blah. But then I thought and I realized, no, this isn't about just humiliating America. This is silly. This is stupid. Uh, it's petty and it's kind of idiotic. And the reason it is is because the climate is changing. Of course, the climate is changing. This is There was a glacier here at one time, but because the climate is changing, it's it's gone away. Going to France and not educating people in your own country is like running away from the problem. You're retreating, you're accepting defeat because most Americans and most people around the world believe in climate change. And the sad fact is, unless the United States gets more behind all these big climate initiatives, it's not going to make a big difference. For us here in Canada, they have more clout than we do. They have 10 times the people we do. It's important. We can't have all those climate scientists going across the pond and not fighting the good fight here in North America. Okay? All right? Good. Look at Lake Ontario right now. It's like flooded. Half the islands are underwater. That's only going to get worse unless we do something. Don't go to France. Don't run away. Fight your battles. It's like people that left the states when Trump got elected. I'm not saying I can understand why they did because, well, you know, we've discussed this many times. But I'm just saying, don't run away, keep fighting. Always stay fighting. Stick and move, stick and move, stick and move. Speaking of moving, kids playing Pokemon Go, not as moving as people thought they were going to be. Now, I don't know, it's been about a year now, Pokemon Go made its big debut. Everyone was talking about how Pokemon Go was basically going to change everything. All these kids that are constantly obese are finally gonna be moving around, they're gonna be getting exercise, they're going to be like living the life. They're going to be walking around parks going and they even placed like all these Pokemon arenas and upgrades and all this nonsense in areas around parks to encourage people to be more active. That's what doctors were saying. They were kind of getting behind. Hey, look, it's the same doctor picture. They were kind of getting behind it and getting all excited about it, you know, but it didn't happen. Kids are still really fat. That's the, that's the end result. Kids are really fat. Now I, I actually, there's a park by my place out in Ajax and I run through that park all the time and there must be some big Pokemon gathering spot there because there's always like hundreds of kids there every Saturday and they're not being active they're just walking around like a bunch of zombies looking at their phones the entire time I can't tell I can't tell if they're playing Pokemon Go or they're getting really sad texts because that's all they do you know what would be great though maybe they could modify the game in certain ways in that you had to travel a certain distance, you had to move at a certain speed, etc, 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 or you wouldn't be able to get these super rare Pokemon. Or maybe if you were in this training area or whatever with all these other kids and you were moving the most and moving the fastest, then you would get access to all these. Of course, then there's always like, you'd have one kid who's like really good at running and stuff and kids would pay him or her to do all the movement for them so that they could get the better things. There's a solution to the problem. There really is. Maybe they could make a rival game like Pokemon Predator and like these Pokemon Predators would get points for stealing all your stuff and they would chase you down. That's actually, that's a terrible idea. Don't, don't follow that one at all. Uh, moving on, smoking. There's a woman in Australia, her name is Crystal. That's all she wants to be identified as. Uh, and she's so desperate to quit smoking that she wants to be chained to her bed and then she wants to be left with enough food to survive for a two-week period after which she is a hundred percent certain that she will have kicked the habit 
the cold turkey hard way, which is just like Renton wanted to do in Train Spot. Like, that is a creepy picture. You found like the creepiest one of all, Matt. Just gonna take a second. To that's gotta get, gotta get the point across. That's addiction, kids. That's hot tea. Take a good look, because addiction is not pretty. All right? What do we got? Ah, oh, I missed my joke. Okay, listen. This isn't going to work. Her plan to quit is not going to work. You know what's going to happen in like a month? We're going to be reading another headline being like, woman who chained herself to bed to quit smoking is smoking again. And we'll all be like, what? Didn't see that coming, oh my gosh. Listen, if you wanna quit, just quit, man. Don't try and get internet publicity. Ridiculous. Uh, Bill Maher's an idiot. Listen, I love Bill Maher. I think he is, is he's walked the line on a lot of tough issues. Uh, I think he's been, uh, I don't think you can uh, make a big argument for him not acting like an Islamophobe a lot of times, because he does, uh, but I don't think he's wrong about everything, but two weeks ago when he dropped uh, the N-bomb on TV, my buddy Kwame, by the way, he hates the term N-bomb because he goes, you're saying it without saying it. I'm not going to say it, Kwame. I'm not saying the word. I can't say it. I actually did. I'll tell you a true story about my relationship with uh, the N-bomb. When I was in the fourth grade, uh, we read the book, The Underground to Canada. And the N-bomb appears constantly in that book, all right? I'd never even heard the term before. I'd never heard it. So, when I went home that night, my mom asked me to vacuum the floor. And I said, what am I? Your, that's what I said. I said it, I did. It's the only time I've said it. And I remember my father raising his head and giving me the look of death. And he goes, what did you say? And I went, well, I said, what am I, your... And I got spanked immediately. Like, my dad grabbed me, and it was like, crack, 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 crack. And I was in my room, and then like an hour later, my mother comes upstairs, she goes, now you know why you're here. And I'm like, actually, I don't. I have no idea what I did. What did I do? What was wrong? And then she explained to me like, well, that word is a racial slur. I didn't even know what, I didn't even know what racism meant. So Bill Maher on Friday, Bill Maher had uh, Ice Cube on his show on Friday night and Ice Cube breaks it down in two minutes and explains why Bill Maher apologizing doesn't change anything or anything. And he has this line about how like, you know, like, just because you're a white guy and you've had a few black girlfriends and some of you have made you some Kool-Aid doesn't mean that you get to use that word. You're too familiar. And I totally get what he means by too familiar. Like, you know how you have, like, your one buddy and he's a good buddy and then he's, like, coming to your place all the time. And then you go over to your house and, like, he's, like, hanging out in your backyard and he's drinking your beer. Too familiar. Bill Maher saying that word. Too familiar. As Ice Cube said... That was a word that was used to oppress black people for years by white people. Black people have taken that word. It's their word now. We don't get to have it back. We don't. It's fine. Also, that being said, Lethal Injection is an absolutely amazing album. Also really like Predator. I mean, everybody likes Predator. Everybody likes Predator. You're not going to find anybody that doesn't like Predator. It's a great album. Lethal Injection was the first Ice Cube album I ever bought. And to this day, I would put Ghetto Bird in like my top five hip hop songs of all time. And while we're on the topic of race and all that stuff, uh, Black Panther trailer came out over the weekend. For anybody who's like, well, there's not enough white people in the trailer. The only white guy you see is like the bad guys. Have you ever read a Black Panther comic? You idiot. Who cares? I'm excited about this. And the reason I'm excited about this is because you're going to take like a film genre that traditionally has been dominated by like just white dudes with abs. And you're going to open it up to a whole bunch of other people of other skin colors that also have abs. So once we get like the fat, sedate superhero into the mix, we'll have everybody covered. Wonder Woman with her shredded body, and then you got Black Panther with his shredded body, Chris Hemsworth with his shredded body. What's with all the good looking people? 
When are we going to get some ugly superheroes? When's Steve Buscemi making a superhero movie? That's when I know we'll have hit all the buttons. Black Panther looks amazing, by the way. Strongly encourage you to get it. And then go buy Lethal Injection. Ghetto Bird. Tell anybody. It's a good time. Oh, do we have prize? No, we don't have a prize right now. Sorry. <laughs>